Good afternoon. Lord Mayor, Chair of the Council, distinguished guests, my colleagues, students, it is my pleasure to see you all today. Thank you for honoring me by sparing your time to attend my inaugural address. I would like to extend a special warm welcome to those of you who have traveled from afar. I would also like to welcome my wife, Tabitha, and my son, Sujan and Deeran. Our daughter, Arabi, sadly unable to be here today. She has some university lectures to attend. <laughs> my siblings and their families are watching the live feed around the world. I thank them all for their support as my family has been crucial for my professional and personal achievements. Hello to all the friends of the university who are watching via the live feed. Thank you for tuning in. And to those in Dalian, Guanian Hao. I'm Professor Nishan Kanagaraja, and I have the honor of being the seventh president and vice chancellor of this great university. I deeply appreciate the warm and the friendly welcome I have received from our students, our staff, alumni, and key partners in the city region since I started on the 4th of November. Thank you all. I'm also grateful to members of the university for the excellent support in helping me to settle into my new role. During the past few weeks, I have visited nearly all the schools and professional divisions. There's only a few more remaining for me to do to complete a tour of the whole university. This has been an incredibly useful, albeit tiring, exercise. But it has given me an opportunity to get to know the staff and students, their ambitions and aspirations for this great university. I've been struck by the passion, collegiality, and a sense of pride everyone demonstrated in this university. I've been very fortunate indeed to meet many senior officials and business leaders in the city so early in my tenure and to hear their ambitions and hopes for this university. As we now start thinking about our vision and strategy for our next century, I want to build on this incredible asset to make the University of Leicester a key player in the region, nation, and beyond. Through our contributions and working in partnership with our key stakeholders, I would like Leicester, the city and region, to become globally recognized as an attractive city to live, learn, and work. In my talk today, I will endeavor to cover the following. I would like to give you a brief introduction to my personal journey and motivations for this role. Briefly review the contributions of the university in the last 100 years. Provide some early thoughts on our vision and strategy for the next century. This is a precursor to the university-wide conversation which is about to begin. The culmination of this work will lead to the publication of our strategy in March this year. I'm conscious that I follow eminent men who have made their mark in our university's history. To repurpose Sir Isaac Newton's statement, I stand on the shoulders of giants to be able to develop a sound vision for this university. Professor Sir Bob Burgess, saw us rise to top 20 status and the Times Higher Education University of the Year in 2008. The same year, the Queen opened the David Wilson Library. And my predecessor, Professor Paul Boyle, whose dream to build a space park here in our city will begin to become a reality tomorrow when the groundbreaking takes place. In this address, I want to reflect on the history of the university and show how this unique heritage shapes my vision for the future. 
But first, I want to share how my personal story shapes my educational vision. An ancient proverb in my heritage language Tamil says, Capture the Kaiman Alavu, Kalaladu, Ulahalavu, which means what we know is a fistful, what we don't know is a worldful. The proverb generates an attitude of humility, but also awe towards the mystery of knowledge. I have been influenced by these values since I was a young boy. As I have progressed through my life and career, these views have only strengthened. My experience of leaving a country torn by ethnic conflict and finding a new life in a different land is a story about the transformative power of education. I was born in Jaffna, a small town in Sri Lanka. The civil war affected my schooling. There was constant fighting, and many people I knew died, including my best friend when he was just 22. Family life was extremely difficult, as the poverty in the country was compounded by my family's humble means. But my parents, both teachers, were committed to education. The school offered a safe haven from the chaos outside. I enjoyed studying, playing sports, and made the most of the opportunities available at school. After completing my high school, I was about to join one of the top national universities to do my undergraduate studies in engineering. But I was thrilled to be offered a scholarship at Christ College, University of Cambridge. That moment changed my life. It was also one of the toughest things I've ever done. I had never traveled abroad, barely spoke English, so it was a real culture shock. Certain words and expressions such as cup of tea, <laughs> piece of cake, and nightmare all had a different meaning in the UK. My constant shaking of the head created some confusion. For an engineer, the distinction between yes and no is the frequency and the direction of the shake. <laughs> so it caused much confusion for my friends and lecturers. In one of my tutorials, one of the supervisors explained the concept to me three times because he thought my head shake meant I didn't follow, when in fact I had understood the concept the very first time. <laughs> I relate this anecdote because it's slightly amusing, but also because it speaks to our understanding of a globalized world where daily people of different cultures and values meet and interact. We all bring our different strengths and values to the table and in a university and a city like Leicester that diversity is our greatest strength and asset. For me, being at an English university was a quite, quite an eye-opener in the sense that I was surrounded by highly capable people, some amazingly talented, but also some who very simply wanted to make a difference. That's what, that was inspiration. I was fortunate to make some great friends at Cambridge, and we are still friends, and, and meet up. I was determined not to waste the opportunity I had been given at Cambridge, and with the support of my friends, I was able to excel in my education. Unable to travel home due to the ongoing war, I decided to explore other countries. One summer, I went into railing in Europe. Then I traveled to Brazil to work with disadvantaged communities. And in my final year, I visited Israel, the West Bank, and, the Egypt, and Egypt. I learned a lot during my travels, which helped me value diversity and inclusion. I realized that different perspectives, cultures, and ideas can come together to create transformative outcomes. I was fortunate enough to receive another scholarship to remain at Cambridge to complete my PhD. And I dedicated this research to designing better hearing aids. I was motivated to this research through seeing my own mother's hearing difficulties since I was a child. 
This focus continued at the University of Bristol, where I optimized these hearing aids for mobile phone users and explored the use of sign language for mobile communication. I was lucky to have really great colleagues, such as Professor Joe McGeehan, who hired me and gave me opportunities to develop my academic career at Bristol. With my close colleague, Professor Dave Bull, we established a successful signal and image processing research activity at Bristol. I also gained significant experience in international research through my collaborations in, EU, in European projects, India, USA, Japan, China, and the Middle East. As you can see, my life has been shaped by the opportunities I've received and the generosity and support of others. Since they have shaped who I am, my research, my approach to life, my values are all centered on giving back to others, to support, enhance, and to enrich lives. And that I see as being at the very core purpose of a university. My background and values align perfectly with the University of Leicester. I think that's why I feel so much at home here already. Ut vitam habent, so that they may have life, has been the university's motto from the day we opened our doors in 1921. Built as a living memorial to those who made sacrifices in the First World War, we have always existed to improve life. The spirit of generosity and collective social conscience still strong, stand strong today, driving us to create better futures in our community and wider society, making our heritage as true today as it has always been. This university as a powerful story to tell, and one that we should be immensely proud of. No other university has this unique heritage, or the unique connection to the Attenborough family. I'm reminded of Albert Einstein, who captures this heritage. A hundred times every day, I remind myself that my inner and outer life are based on the labors of other men, living and dead and that I must exert myself in order to give in the same measure as I have received and I am still receiving. We have changed lives in so many ways and continue to do so today with our world leading research and education. Our own very Professor Alec Jeffries invented DNA fingerprinting in 1984, now used by the crime agencies around the world and for solving immigration disputes and paternity cases. We're leading the fight against diabetes at the Leicester Diabetes Center. We developed the National NICE Risk Assessment Tool and greatly advanced our understanding of how diabetes affect PME communities in the UK. Professor Lisa Smith is currently starting a project in Kenya, supported by philanthropic funding, to develop the first commercial prototypes of a test kit that will enable women who have been subjected to sexual violence to collect evidence, which means they're more likely to gain justice. 60 years ago, Professor Ken Pounds founded the uh, research, space research group at the University of Leicester. The first Leicester-built instrument in space was launched aboard a Skylark rocket in 1961. And there's been at least one piece of Leicester-built equipment operating in space every year since 1967. And we conducted Britain's biggest ever study of hate crime victimization. Then used these new insights to transform policy, support marginalized communities, and help organizations across the globe to improve their responses to victims and perpetrators. I've learned so much about the university since joining, and want to share just a few examples here with you today. Women have always played a leading role at the university. Local school mistresses Florence Rich, Sarah Roberts, Sarah Heron, and Agnes Evans ran girls' schools and were educating their pupils to university entry level in the late 1800s and 1900s. They supported the founding of a university college 
to provide greater opportunities for their pupils to study. Our commitment to supporting refugees goes back many years. The Attenboroughs provided a home for two young girls who fled the Nazi persecution. And we are still continuing that tradition of support today. I'm immensely proud to continue our commitment as a university of sanctuary, in a city of sanctuary. And this year, we are committing further with increased scholarships, thanks to our partnership with Santander. And we will be running a residential summer school for refugees and asylum seekers to get a taste of our university life and to support their language skills. When I hear stories from our University of Sanctuary students, it makes me so proud to know that we are truly honoring our heritage of kindness. One of our students, Parang, a University of Tehran graduate, fled Iran and made the perilous journey to the UK, escaping death threats from traffickers. Like many other refugees, she turned to us. She's now studying a film and film cultures MA, and I'm delighted that she's joining us here today. In the late 1940s, Mary Swainson set up one of the first student counseling services in the UK, <coughs> here at Leicester, acting as a leading light for student well-being in higher education. Today, in 2020, we strive to continue to be a forerunner for student well-being, and we have invested 2.6 million into these services this year. However, higher education is experiencing unprecedented demand for student well-being services. And at the University of Leicester, we will be working hard with our student body to respond to these needs and committing further investment to this priority area. In the 1960s, our students took part in protests and staged sit-ins in the city pubs that operated colour bars, refusing to serve people of colour in certain areas of the pubs. In the 1970s, GaySoc was founded by students and we were a leading force for gay liberation. Equality, diversity and inclusion are high on my agenda. And so I have taken on the role of chair of the university's EDI committee, alongside my role as part of the UUK's advisory group to tackle racial harassment in higher education. Also in the 1970s, our students helped set up Highfields Adventure Playground with the mission of providing a place for children from different ethnic backgrounds to play together. I want to strengthen our relationship with the City Council and I'm pleased that we are working closely in three areas, health, education and cities promotion. As a university, we will make a tangible difference to Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland under our new community engagement initiative, LE100. Many of these achievements are down to our staff and students. Our legacy is built through our combined efforts, which has resulted in us being a historic university we celebrate now. Our alumni are our past, present and future. They help the po power the positive change which we see today and for the next 100 years. Collectively, our members are our greatest asset. And our students are still making waves and breaking down barriers. One of them, sports scholar Nick Cummins, a history PhD student, has successfully developed into an established Great Britain international wheelchair basketball athlete whilst completing his studies. Nick represented Great Britain at all major wheelchair basketball competitions and tournaments throughout the last 12 months and is aiming for Tokyo 2020 selection. Bethan Rogoyowski, named PhD student of the year, whose work concentrates on a form of cancer associated with industrial exposure to asbestos. The award judges were impressed by not only Beth's work in the lab, but also her extracurricular activities, including a project to improve STEM engagement in deprived communities and the use of comics to break down complex scientific ideas. James Boyd, a maths graduate who won the Research with Impact Award at the National Green Gown Awards in November last year, who invented a tool to calculate the carbon sequestration of our trees that is now being used by the Leicester City Council. 
Alongside the so social impact this university generates, we also generate a huge economic impact. We contribute 360 million to the economy of the city of Leicester, supporting one in every 23 jobs in the city. The university spends more than 10 million annually with local businesses. Our students spend 100 million, 35 million of which is spent by our international students. We have trained 3,000 doctors and 4,000 teachers over the past 15 years. The discovery and identification of King Richard III boosted the local economy by 59 million. Through our HeartWise program, we have a defibrillator in every school in Leicester, training 33,000 pupils in CPR. Over 200,000 visitors a year visited Attenborough Arts, our botanic gardens, and our public lectures and events. Again, these are just a few highlights of our impact. And imagine how proud our founders would be of the achievements of the last 100 years. As we prepare for our centenary celebrations, we will take the opportunity to recognize these great achievements of the staff and students of this university and our partners. Let me now focus on the future. In the last 100 years, there has been seismic shifts in higher education governance, policy, and funding. Universities are now regarded as key players and expected to contribute to regional and national wealth creation, deliver the workforce required to meet the diverse needs of our society, and to contribute to addressing the challenges faced by communities in deprived parts of our society. We need to respond to these challenges and deliver successful outcomes was focusing on our core mission as a university, which is committed to producing new knowledge and educating the next generation of graduates and researchers. We need to ensure that our values, our practices, and performance give confidence to the public, to the funding agencies, and to the external partners to demonstrate that the University of Leicester is responding to these challenges and doing so well. While there have been significant changes in the national landscape, society as a whole has seen a massive transformation in education. As expectations have increased, we are living with new technologies, and we are operating in an increasingly connected world, which has brought many benefits, but some threats too. Recent political and health events are a good example of that. We are largely seeing examples where the advent of new technologies such as artificial intelligence, 5G, wearable technologies, social media, and data science are having a profound impact in the way we learn, live, and work. I expect there to be further radical changes in our lives through novel digital and biological developments, coupled with societal challenges like climate change, a growing population of the elderly, and a society increasingly connected and, on reliant, and reliant on machines and gadgets. However, despite all the uncertainties and challenges, I am confident that universities will become increasingly important. We will provide the solutions and understanding to maximize these opportunities for the benefit of everyone in our society. They will undoubtedly lead to questions on how a universities can deliver outstanding learning and education for all students. How we undertake research that really addresses these societal questions. And how universities will ensure that they retain a global outlook whilst also meeting the challenges faced by their local communities. At the University of Leicester, we already do this. And are well placed to continue to respond to these challenges by taking a truly inclusive approach to everything we do, and in working with partner, in partnership with all our communities. As we move into our second century, I would like the university to be resolute and be committed to three core priorities in our mission. Firstly, I would like the University of Leicester to be globally recognized as a research intensive university. We will strive to deliver excellent research and education and reflect that in our values and culture, supporting our staff to be outstanding in delivering these outcomes. 
We need to ensure that our students have the opportunity to learn from our research leaders, but also get an opportunity to engage in our research during their time at Leicester. Secondly, we will remain a comprehensive university, supporting the diverse range of disciplines from health sciences to humanities. We will need to develop a culture which supports interdisciplinary research to tackle major societal challenges facing us today. Our students benefit from the opportunity to engage with staff and students from other disciplines to appreciate different disciplinary approaches and worldviews. Thirdly, University of Leicester will deliver economic and social benefits to Leicester and the wider region. We are fortunate to be located in one of the most culturally and ethnically diverse cities in the UK. A city with big ambitions, with great people, who are open-armed and welcoming. We are rich in heritage, sports, and culture, and renowned as a festival city. I would like the university to develop educational and research programs which address the challenges faced by our local communities. The university should be recognized as a valued partner by Leicester City Council, Orby and Wixton Borough Council, and the County Council, within whose boundaries we are located as well as other civic and government re governmental representatives and agencies, education establishments, and local regional alliances such as the Midlands Innovation. So, as I said at the beginning of the speech, I feel very much at home at the University of Leicester. I've met many staff, students, and alumni. They will hopefully have seen and experienced my beliefs and values. My vision for the University of Leicester is that we will be a world leader for inclusivity, working in partnership with our communities to innovate and deliver outstanding education and research. But what do I mean by inclusivity? Inclusion is at the heart of everything I do and believe in. Empowering people to be the best they can be, providing opportunity, Building trust and treating people with respect will further enhance and strengthen this wonderful university. I will always try to provide equal access for people or organizations who may have been marginalized or excluded. I believe this is true of Leicester as a city. I want to turn it into a tangible ambition for this university. For us to be recognized globally for our inclusivity and for it to contribute to our diversity, equality and sustainability, we need to embed inclusion in everything we do. We will demonstrate this in our research, our teaching and learning, our course development, our enterprise ventures, our admissions, to ensure we stand out from the crowd. I believe we have the opportunity to rethink the norm and approach everything in a new and progressive way. In 10 years time, I want us to be recognized as a world leader in inclusivity. This is about meaningful inclusion, creating a community that embodies our heritage, shapes our future, and delivers positive change for diverse communities. We will embody that what true inclusion means by delivering outstanding educational outcomes for all our students. Creating research that offers a unique interdisciplinary approach and impactful outcomes, where we are challenge-led and cu driven by curiosity. And by driving a culture of partnership, where we demonstrate meaningful co-production with regional, national, and global partners. I'm asking you all to join me in this endeavor, making 2020 the beginning of a positive change as we approach the next century. To give you some examples of how this might work, being inclusive allows us the opportunity to introduce new and exciting co-creation opportunities for students and business in our education. Let's create a model where there's genuine collaboration with academics, students, and external partners and organizations. We're bringing together our different experiences and ideas to make a better and more relevant education experience. We would like to research and deliver insights on how to transform student recruitment, which attracts students with the greatest potential to succeed here at Leicester. 
and providing a truly inclusive university where everyone feels they belong and are well supported. As an original creator of distance learning, we need to rethink digital learning to create transformative educational opportunities for communities both in the UK and internationally, including those who may not have the opportunity to do otherwise. We can th rethink our relationship around the world when it comes to research. Universities that see the value of co-designed research programs with access to business thinking are creating impact and able to tackle the global challenges that face humankind today. Being inclusive also gives us permission to create a new way of partnership development for the university. The ambition for Space Park Leicester shows we can do this. The world around us is not standing still and our students need to be ready to create and respond to change. We should embed enterprise and entrepreneurialism into our education so that our graduates have the skills and resilience to be adaptable in an ever-changing workplace. These are just some of my ideas to demonstrate my initial thoughts. And in the next few months, I want to hear your ideas and see how we could evolve this into a distinctive strategy for Leicester. However, if you are to be a world leader for inclusion, we need to do some groundwork. We need to take our strengths, our heritage, and our successes, and start to tell the world our story in a clear and compelling way. Let's harness our 100 years and create a forward-focused story to inspire future generations to be part of us. We will mark our centenary according to three themes as we continue the celebrations in September. Think 100, R100, Act 100, to demonstrate how our history and heritage is shaping our future. So what makes us stand out? We are a university that embraces diversity. Where we believe our differences make us stronger. We produce world-class research. Our education is inspired by research. And we have a strong entrepreneurial spirit. We are inclusive and collaborate with our communities. It is very clear to me that being a force for good seems to be part of our DNA as we continually br break down barriers, overcome challenges, and strive for a better world. It is, after all, the reason we were created by the people of Leicester, Leicestershire, and Rutland. Therefore, pillars of our distinctive strategy is based on the premise, we are diverse in our makeup and united in ambition. We create, share, and apply knowledge to make transformative change with all communities, wherever they are. We are citizens of change. As Sir David Attenborough said in Centenary Square just over 12 months ago, this university has a wonderful reputation for humanity, for culture, for generosity, as do the citizens of this ancient noble city. We are citizens of change. And this should be the story that we tell about ourselves. This is who we are, our identity. It's in our DNA. I'm excited about the future for the university and our community. And I want to work with you all as we look ahead to the second century. We have the opportunity to make a real difference, to solve problems, and to provide opportunity so that they may have life. So what do we need to do? We now need to articulate our ambition and embed our identity through a new strategic plan with clear purpose to take us from strength to strength. The plan needs to demonstrate a clear link between who we are, what we stand for, 
and what we intend to achieve during the next 10 years. Our strategy will have three core strategic aims. Research-inspired education, curiosity-driven research, and sustainable partnerships. We will ensure our strategy and operations are underpinned by four guiding principles. These are health and well-being of our staff and students, financial sustainability, environmental sustainability, and diversity and inclusion. In the recent years, the sector has justifiably focused on improving student experience. And there is more we need to do. I would like to ensure that we also deliver an excellent staff experience, which is essential to deliver exceptional student outcomes. I would urge the government, regulators, and funders to ensure we retain and support our staff to help maintain our global position. I want to finish today by demonstrating my commitment to this vision for the University of Leicester to be a world leader in inclusion. So I would like to announce a small number of pledges to get us started. My first pledge focuses on transformative teaching. The priorities in education are supporting a curriculum suited to the needs of the next century and our diverse and exciting student body. It would build on our core strengths provide opportunity for all students to enhance their employability through problem solving, communication skills, and team working. The world is changing at a greater pace than we can predict. How do we ensure our graduates are able to adapt and be successful in that changing workplace? The makeup of our student body has changed significantly during the past century. It is clear as we move into the next century, our student makeup will be diverse in ambition and geographical reach. How do we ensure our curriculum and student support create a truly inclusive environment for every student to flourish and achieve their full potential? Here, I would like to re reassert my commitment to eliminating the awarding gap. With a large proportion of our student population coming from ethnic minorities, we have a moral duty and responsibility to eliminate the awarding gap, which is so evident across the sector. I'm acutely aware that I'm just one of six BAME Vice Chancellors in the country and the first BAME Vice Chancellor at this university. This positive change of university leadership is, high, is, I hope, playing a small part in showing the phases of our future leaders are many and varied. But this is not just about race. This is about the liberation of education. I want to work with students from all walks of life to change the way education is delivered today. We will learn from them as they learn from us, so we can change the world together. Today, I pledge that we will see this through with the establishment of the Leicester Institute for Inclusion in Higher Education, the first of its kind. This research institute, building on the excellent work already done at various schools, particularly our School of Education and the Leicester Learning Institute, will inject research in education across the board and uncover the causes behind the awarding gap, which will not just change the University of Leicester's approach, but across the globe. My second pledge focuses on research leadership. I'm committed to curiosity-driven research within an environment which supports research across all major disciplines. As a comprehensive university, we will embrace different research practices and value the diverse range of contributions made by our staff in producing outstanding discoveries, attracting research funding, generating research impact, and training the next generation. We will need to maximize the funding opportunities such as the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund and the Global Challenges Research Fund to drive partnerships with business and global partners. Our Space Park Initiative is a great example of a world-leading research program in partnership with major government funders and business partners is producing new discoveries, generating impact, and meeting the skilled needs of the partners. Similarly, Leicester Biomedical Research Center is doing pioneering translational health research in partnership with University Hospitals Leicester and other universities and industry. How do we identify and establish additional centers of such scale so we can lead large national and international initiatives? 
We will invest in staff, early career researchers, PhD studentships and research facilities to be recognized globally for the breadth and standing of our research performance. I pledge today to create 10 centenary professor positions to grow our global reputation in areas of excellence. During the next few months, we will identify the research programs which would benefit from this investment. We will continue to invest in our research institute to strengthen our interdisciplinary research offering and to identify new institutes in emerging priorities such as data science, creative economy, and environmental medicine to address key global and civic challenges. My final pledge focuses on environmental sustainability. Climate change is currently one of the most pressing issues facing humanity. Universities have a clear role in understanding the complex environmental challenges we face and in identifying the solutions. From Anthropocene to zoology, Earth observation to energy reduction, Leicester has a strong legacy in expertly measuring environmental challenges and influencing positive change. We have proudly been researching and teaching about climate change since the 1980s. And as our research have increased knowledge and our graduates have effected change, operationally we have shrunk our carbon footprint even as we've grown our physical footprint. We have laid a strong foundation for my ambition for Leicester to be a world leader in environmental sustainability both academically and operationally. I'm proud to announce the publication of our climate strategy and pledge the university's commitment to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And I'm delighted that we have already demonstrated this commitment by divesting from fossil fuels. I hope you can see from my vision and ambition that I want to take this university on a journey where it is simply not the University of Leicester but the University for Leicester and beyond. I've been inspired by meeting many of you in helping me shape my thinking. And as we formulate our strategic plan, I urge you to contribute. And I pause at this juncture to acknowledge that in the past, we did not always get everything right. You have all faced challenges. And my job now is to lift this university to its rightful place. To do this, we are committed to all our staff in all professions, levels, and disciplines. My mission is to create an environment in which you can flourish. We are committed to our students to create the best student experience in order to ensure your time at university is the best years of your life. We are committed to our alumni. You are our global ambassadors, our friends for life. And we are committed to our supporters and partners. You have heard me talk about bringing a new meaning to partnership, which is genuine and life-changing. Finally, before I finish, I would like to honor the city of Leicester, the counties of Leicestershire and Rutland, and the individuals, families, and companies whose generosity created this wonderful university. Let us look to the future. It is the start of a new decade, a new century for the university. A new beginning for all of us. The future is ours to change. We are citizens of change. Thank you.